there we go. Everyone, hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all having brilliant, fantastic, amazing days. As always, welcome back to another FX London channel YouTube video. Um, today is going to be a slightly different style YouTube video, okay? It's going to be a slightly longer style form video. I'm going to be jumping onto TradingView. I'm going to be showing you how to trade XAUUSD, otherwise known as gold. Um, you know, the, the strategy that I use for intraday trading that I have used and built and developed over the last three years now. Um, so it's going to be a longer style video. It's not going to be a commonly asked question. It's not going to be a 5, 10, 15 minute snippet like I usually do. Um, this is going to be a 30, 40 minute video. Um, hopefully as raw and as uncut and as unedited as, as I can possibly make it. Um, we're going to be jumping onto TradingView. We're going to be, you know, breaking down the charts from the higher time frames of monthly all the way down to, you know, the 15 minute candles, um, showing you how I get into trades, showing you how I get out of trades. Now, if you want to become a pro trader, you know, someone that trades, um, you know, consistently as much as you can, this is going to be a really, really useful video. And I hope it is. And I've really been looking forward to making this video for a long, for a long time. Um, you know, and I've now just found, you know, the 30, 40 minute window that I've got to do it in. So I'm really looking forward to making this. Hopefully you enjoy it. You know, if you do, as always, feel free to, you know, give us a like. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Before I begin, check out all the links down below. It's going to be, you know, where all the community group chats are, you know, Telegram, Discord, um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, the lot. So if you want to join the community, you know, with beginner, expert, intermediate traders, you know, I've got ex-Wall Street traders, I've got people that are completely beginning, feel free to join down below. Um, but without further ado, let's dive into it, okay? Let's dive into, um, you know, trading view. Let me share my screen. So any second now, it should load and we should be able to see, you know, my charts. Um, so here we are. Um, this was actually me going through it last night. Um, I didn't quite have the energy to do it last night. I was recording at one in the morning, about to do this video, but just got too exhausted to do it. Um, so let me delete all of this. Um, this was me you know, going through it and soon realizing I need some sleep. <laughs> so um, without further ado, let's start as I was last night. So if we start on the monthly time frame, okay, this is here, the gold chart. Um, otherwise known as XAUUSD. Now, for those of you that are complete beginners that have never done any trading before, um, here up at the top hand side, we can see you know, tradingview.com. It's a great place to be doing chart ups analysis. Um, if you're new to trading, tradingview.com, head there, you can you know, get a free account um, and essentially do you know, see these charts that I'm seeing today and do your chart analysis um, completely for free. I did have a premium account, which you can subscribe to, which basically means that you can have more indicators. It means you can have your charts you know, up on the right hand side, you know, saved and stored. Um, but otherwise, the free version is fine. And you know, we might see a few ads pop up here throughout the duration of this video. Um, but otherwise, it's it's all it's all good. So here on the left hand side, we can clearly um, you know see all of the different brokerages that are providing gold. Me personally, Oanda, okay, is the best for you know what I've been using my strategy. It's been best for being able to visualize some of the things that I like to see as confluences when I take a trade. So starting off, you know, let's let's take a macro view. Um, you know, this is the gold chart on the monthly. Okay, you know, we've got a little pattern here. Um, but since 2007, okay, we were sitting at you know 650, and we saw a massive bullish move until about 2008, up to 940, a bearish descent down to 730 towards the end of 2008. Okay, and then we saw a massive rally until 20, 2012. Okay, up to 1881, 1890. Um, you know, pretty much hitting the 1900 mark. Okay. And we saw you know, a massive descending channel, you know, massive retracement through to 2016, okay, and a continuation to the upside, you know, from the latter years, um, you know, when I've actually been trading myself. Um, so I've been trading gold for the last three years, okay, pretty much every single day. Um, so I've basically been trading, you know, since 2019 here through to you know the present day. Um, and you know, if we zoom into the weekly, okay, drop down to the weekly time frame we can actually see some of the recent, you know, events that have happened in the world, okay? So March 2020, we can see clearly where we, you know, started COVID. Um, now, gold seen as a safe haven asset, an asset that you can, you know, look to store your wealth in, look to store and invest in, um, you know, when the economies are, you know, bad, people are worried about the economy, people are worried about the certain, you know, world situation, we tend to see gold, you know, increase because of course it's seen as a safe haven asset. So people want to move their assets from riskier, you know, assets like crypto perhaps, perhaps, you know, um, more aggressive trades in the stock market through to, through to, through to gold itself, um, you know, because of course gold is seen as safe haven. So here we can see, um, in fact, the massive bullish move that, that, you know, happened from March 2020 through to August 2020. Okay, we've seen some massive pips here. So this was a massive move, a four, you know, pretty much 1500, a 1490, all the way up to you know, 2070, 2065, it's a huge, huge move. Um, you know, pretty much every single week, as we can see throughout this duration, was bullish. Um, this was the, you know, these two candles here, these two weeks, um, was clearly when everyone was worried about 
the whole world as you know people thought um the whole world was you know <laughs> going to be worked out for the covid um everyone was worried um the whole market the whole global economy was worried um so everything dropped off um but then as soon as people start becoming comfortable with the situation realizing that we were going to bounce back from this okay that it could be contained it could be sorted out um we saw a massive rally and you know ever since we've seen a bit of a descending channel a bit more consolidating and then here we can see um, the recent war between you know Russia and Ukraine, you know, causing another spike up in the market um, as people were worried that you know World War Three was going to begin because of you know Putin and and Russia invading Ukraine and possibly you know pushing further into other NATO countries in Europe. So, as I mentioned before in other videos, you know I'm an intraday trader myself, um, so I'm taking gold trades. Um, you know, on the 15, 30, one hour, four hour candles. Um, so I'm not taking it on the daily, the weekly, or the monthly. That's more swing trading. Um, but for me, you know, dropping down to these time frames is where we can actually start to look at the entries. So today, without making this a five, 10 hour video, because of course I want to keep it, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, not really much longer, because otherwise people are going to, you know, really struggle to watch it through. Um, some people love long form content, some people don't, some people don't have the attention span for it. Um, but yeah, I hope this video is going to be, you know, hugely helpful. I'm going to break down for you on the 30 minute, one hour, four hour, and 15 minute, you know, how I'm getting my trades in. Um, you know, and getting out of them, you know, every single day within the market. So as you can see, I've removed all of my drawings, um, but I'm going to you know, start putting putting them back on the screen and we can start breaking them down. So let's jump onto the four hour. OK, so when trading gold, there are a few things. OK, now the first thing that I'm going to break down for you is an indicator. OK, it's a free indicator. It's one that I don't um, use on other pairs actually as much, but on gold I do. Um, as other people will know, I'm not a huge fan of indicators. If you've watched some of my other videos, I don't like indicators, okay, because most of them are lagging. Most of them aren't, you know, real time. They're not within the market. Um, they're actually just lagging indicators that are, you know, showing what's already happened in the market. They're not predicting what's going to happen in the market. They're already lagging. So I don't really rate indicators, many of them at least. But there is one that I do actually use, which is called the Relative Strength Index, okay, otherwise known as the RSI, okay. Most people use it. Lots of people use it, um, you know, as, as, as gospel. Um, which I think is a dangerous move. You know, many people are just taking their trades completely on the RSI, but I'll explain why it's, you know, not good to, you know, base your entire strategy off the RSI in a second. So let me get, try and get rid of this yellow line because this one's not actually important. Okay. Okay. So this, you know, section down here is called the RSI. Okay. Or well, it's, you know, a representation of the RSI. Okay. It's default settings. And, you know, up here at the top, we've got a 70 line. Okay, down here at the bottom, we've got a 30 line. Okay, we've got a 30, you know, level, should I say, 70 level, 30 level. Okay, now you can see this purple line, you know, bouncing between these two zones. Okay, sticking in the middle, going over the top sometimes, coming down below, you know, going further down below than 30. And this indicator basically shows us whether the market is oversold or overbought. Okay, now overbought up here, okay, at the 70 level, and oversold down here at the 30 level. Okay. Now, when comparing this to the actual data on the charts and how we can actually utilize it for entries, um, let's, let's show you some examples. So we're on the four hour clearly here. Now, the, the higher the time frames, you know, the more powerful it is, the more, you know, accurate this is going to be. But let me show you this, for instance. So let me get up a little you know, orange circle. Okay. Let's you know, move that there. So it's right in the middle. This section here, okay, if we correspond this, with the RSI, we can see it's at the 70 level, okay? And as a result, the market is being overbought. So there's a strong possibility that the market is gonna retrace, turn back and turn back into a bearish move, okay? And as we can see, that's what happened, okay? Now, if we look at, you know, the other side of things, let's actually use another example, We've got one right here. We get another circle. Here we go again, okay? Another orange circle representing these candlesticks, okay? We're coming to be overbought, once it hits pretty much the 70 level, okay, 68, 69 level, we can see that the market, you know, retraces off. Okay, so it's quite a powerful indicator, okay? Um, it basically shows the momentum of the market, okay? We can look more recent time, let's look at this. Okay, you can see this here, another couple of great examples. Another one here, you know, another one here. Okay, you can see the market has been, you know, overbought, okay? And the market as a result, you know, we can see that it's getting overbought, boom, and it sells off. Okay, we can see that the market is being overbought, boom, sells off, again, okay, vice versa. You know, we can see oversold, okay, another example here. Okay, so we can see that the market's coming down by this, this red, you know, these red candles, by this line, boom, we can see this little retracement and dip in here. Okay, and then right here, we can see that the market is oversold, 
Okay, it's hit that 30 level and it's likely to retrace again, move into a bullish move. Okay, we can see that again, you know, time and time again. You know, I can do this on different days, different time frames, and it and it works. Um, and you know, another another example here. So we can see that it's oversold, hit the 30 level, and it retraces. Okay, however, 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 um, you can't base your strategy entirely off of this, okay? Because it, you know, often in many situations doesn't entirely work. Okay, now let's go on to another another time frame, perhaps. You know, let's use this as an example. Okay, this was when you know we had some fundamentals play in, kick in. I'm pretty sure this was the time when was this? Was this a Friday evening? Seventh, can't see the days, but um, I remember vividly it was a Friday evening around about six o'clock in, in the evening, and the market was about to close. And you know, the news came out about war, you know, the war between Russia and Ukraine, and the market spiked, you know, erratically. Um, you know, having not done so for a long period of time. Um, but let's just look, use this as an example. Don't think this was the example in Ukraine because clearly this was back in. Um, you know, August. So, it, you know, the more recent example was all the way over here um, instead. But this was just the peak of, you know, the bullish rally um, back from the end of COVID, really. Um, so let's use this as an example. But we can see here, OK, we would have been starting to sell off if we were just basing our, you know, analysis off of the RSI here. OK. Directly here. <laughs> yeah. And so as a result, you can see that we would have been in danger. OK, if it was been there. Yeah, you would have been able to see that we we're in danger at that point. Okay, because the market continued to continue to buy, continue to buy, continue to buy, and only retraced here. So if you had sell positions down here, you'd be in trouble. Um, you know, and you'd be hitting lots of stop losses. And if you opened up your trades, you would have been you would have been in trouble. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is that news and fundamental factors and other factors can come into play and really sway. Um, you know, the typical cycles of how gold moves. Um, you know, the typical cycles without any fundamentals means that the RSI would be really really affected. OK, but with other factors that come into play, um, you know, often, more often than not, um, you can get caught out. So RSI is one of the complements that I like to use on gold. OK, now let me break down some of the other complements that I like to use on gold. Let me delete all of those little circles that I put in place. OK, and now let me go on to the next factor. So the next factor that I like to use and incorporate into my gold trading strategy is are things called imbalances. OK, now, if you haven't used imbalances before, um, I'm not surprised because most people don't. Lots of people are using other, you know, things like trend channels, you know, like little patterns and stuff like that. That's what typical retail traders are using. Not many retail traders are using smart money concepts, incorporating things like order flow and, you know, imbalances into their, into their trading, you know, confluences. But for me, they've been hugely effective and I'll show you why. Okay. So let's break it down on the charts. Okay. Now I'm going to get rid of the RSI for now. We can show them together in a second. But essentially, let me show you, you know, some imbalances. OK, now, you know, I can already see one here that's sticking out like a sore thumb. Um, I'm going to get up a rectangle. So it's going to be here. Okay, I'm going to draw it out for you. I'm going to explain it. OK, now this itself okay, is an imbalance. OK, and very, very nearly became a very, very good trade. Um, an imbalance. OK, now let me try and explain this as simply as I can. OK, and when you're looking at candlesticks, OK, candlesticks will often close. So let's look at the example that I've given. Close, OK, the body of the candle will close, open and directly move up, OK, and vice versa. OK, it might push up, close, and then directly move down, creating what I call a flat bottom or a flat top, OK? Now, let me get up a little arrow here. A flat bottom being the fact that this, these two candles here, are literally flat, OK? They're not like, um, let's use an, another example. They're not like, let's try and find another example that's really clear and obvious. They're not like these ones. I'm trying to think of you know one that's not really worked out very well. Most of the down ones have worked out well. That's why it works so well on gold. Um, Let's use this as an example, okay? Goes down, comes straight back up, and then goes straight back down. Okay, it doesn't leave, you know, two candles sitting there together, basically with no space to the right. Okay, and I'll try and make this as simple as I possibly can. But these, for instance, okay, these candles, there's two candles here, okay? And then they get covered up by another candle, okay? It's not clean, if you see what I mean. So you've got two candles, a flat bottom is created, but this candle then dips back into the candle, and you're kind of covering it up, okay? now. As simply as I possibly can say this, these candles don't have another wick dipping down into it, covering it. 
They do for this part. Okay, you see the wick here? This wick does cover it, which basically invalidates part of the imbalance. Okay, so an imbalance for me, for gold, this is the imbalance that I'm working off. There's multiple types of different imbalances, but the imbalance for me is a candle that closes and instantly rejects off and moves up and then isn't filled by a third candle. Okay, so this would be another example over here. Okay, comes down, closes, instantly pushes off. Okay, and then isn't with this third candle covered entirely. Okay, this part of the imbalance is still clean. So if I was to draw out this imbalance, okay, this imbalance would be here. Okay, the top of this candle, okay, to the bottom of the bodies there. Yeah, a little bit higher. Yep, there, and then dragged across. Okay, now that is the imbalance. Okay, now this here, okay, this wouldn't be correctly drawn out. Okay, why? Because this part of the candle wick has invalidated this bit of the imbalance. Okay, only this part of the imbalance is now valid. Okay, and I hope that makes sense. I'll go through it in loads of other examples as well. Okay, but that is where your imbalance is, you know, technically what I class as a real imbalance. Okay, so let's use this as an exa another example, more of a cell side e example. So what we've got is we've got candle, 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 candle pushes up, closes, okay, and then directly moves down. And this third candle only fills part of these candles. Okay, it doesn't fill the whole part of this candle, invalidating it. So this is, this is a legit imbalance, okay? So if I draw it out on the rectangle, here we are, okay? All the way to the top of this wick. Okay, then I drag it across and boom. Now I'm sure you can see where I'm incorporating imbalances into trade entries, because if you can see what's going on here, you can see that that's a very, very nice entry itself. But let me explain this in further depth and detail, okay, without confusing anyone. Okay, now let's use this as another example, okay? So we see these two candlesticks here. Okay, we've got candlestick coming down, candlestick coming down, closes, instant rejection, pushes up. The third candle is only covering this part of the candles, you know, candlestick body. So all of this section here is a valid imbalance. Okay, so let's draw that out. So the top of this candle wick, okay, to the bottom of these bodies, and then dragged across. Okay. Now let's use this as another example, an example that wouldn't be a legit imbalance, okay? So whilst we've seen close, close, instant rejection off, this third candle has covered the entirety of this candle, okay? So it doesn't count as much, okay? So it doesn't count now. Um, let's use this as an example, okay? So you've seen candle close, 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 instant rejection off, and this third candle has filled this proportion, okay, of the imbalance, okay? So, if we were to draw it out just based off of the imbalance body, it'd be from that top to that bottom, okay, and then dragged across, okay? Now, this, for instance, is an invalid imbalance, okay, because we've seen, you know, bullish candle, bullish candle, close, instrument injection off, but this third candle has covered the entirety of this previous bearish candle, okay, invalidating it, okay, because we, we can't do this. We're not allowed to do this. We can't draw over that because this previous wick has been covered. You know, it's covered the previous body, should I say, okay? Whereas, this is good, okay? Why? Because bullish candle, bearish candle, okay? Bullish candle then created another bearish candle. So this would have been an imbalance, okay? If this green candle had instantly gone down, that would have been an imbalance. But instead, now we created a second one. So we've got bullish candle here, bearish candle down here, creating, you know, this free, area that we can draw you know a rectangle across okay from the top of this body down to the bottom of this you know this um this green candle okay which is what covers the imbalance and then dragged across okay and then dragged across all the way nicely okay now let's try and find a few more examples and then we'll move on let's use this as an example let's use this as an example okay and then we we'll use you know, um, what else should we use? This is an example, okay? And then we'll leave it there for trying to understand how an imbalance works and we'll try and incorporate it more into a trade and an entry so you can understand, okay? So 
Let's use this as an example now, okay? Bearish candle, bearish candle, bearish candle, bearish candle, close, instant rejection. And this third candle here only covers this part of the body. It doesn't cover all of the body. Okay, if we had a wick that was all the way down here, it wouldn't count. Okay, the imbalance would be no longer valid. Okay, but because the wick is only up here, it is still valid. So we can see these two bodies down here creating a flat bottom, as I like to call it, a flat bottom here. Okay, and then as a result, we draw our rectangle. Okay, from the moment that the, the imbalance has been invalidated, okay, down to the bottom of the candle, okay, and then drag it across all the way. Okay, and that is our imbalance. Okay, now let's use this as another example, and then we'll try and incorporate it into a trade. Okay, so we can see loads of bearish candles, a bit more choppiness, a bit more choppiness. We've been left with a flat bottom. Okay, our third candle here only invalidates this part of the candle. This is all free, meaning that it's still an imbalance, it's still valid. Okay. And we go from the top of the red candle, okay, to the bottom of the red and green combination, and we drag it across, okay, and then that is our imbalance for this trade. Okay, now bear in mind we're on the four-hour time frame, okay, so we really are on the higher time frame picture. Now, for me, typically, I'm not actually doing it on the on the higher time frame of the four-hour, okay, but it's good to do it on the four-hour time frame because it's easier to understand, it's easier to learn. But if we drop down to the one hour time frame, we'll see that we get more imbalances, we get them more often, okay? And we can utilize them in, you know, in better, better ways. Um, you know, this is actually the time frame that I'm basing most of my imbalances off. But, you know, if there's a four hour imbalance, I might go down to the one hour time frame and see if I can get an imbalance out of the one hour time frame within the four hour box, if you see what I mean. So now let's go on to the one hour time frame. Okay, now let's use this as an example. Okay, I've seen one here. Great, this would be a brilliant trade. Okay, and one that we can possibly talk about. Um, now, let's get my arrow back out. Okay, what we can see here. So try and I'll, I'll I won't pause the screen, but you can pause the screen yourself. Okay, have a think about how you would possibly utilize this imbalance okay, and how you would draw out this imbalance. Okay, here, this red candle and this green candle. It's a great imbalance. How would you draw it out? Okay, so you've had a moment. Bearish candles, bullish candles, bearish candles, bullish candles. We've created our imbalance, okay? Because we've got given a flat bottom, okay? And we have no wick on the next trade that's on the next entry, sorry, on the next candlestick, sorry, um, that, you know, that's covering this green candle. This is all clean, okay? So where are we putting our rectangle? Now, some people might be saying, should we put it up here? But no, okay? We need to put it down by the red candle because this is our imbalance itself, okay? By the red candlestick. That is our imbalance. Okay, and then we drag it across and boom. Okay, and I'm sure from this, we can start to see where we might actually get some trade entries. Okay, so how an imbalance works is that I will use imbalances to target, okay, as targets, sorry. So as targets of where I think price is gonna move to. And I will also use them as entries. So let's first talk about entries. Okay, so let's get back our, our indicator, okay? The RSI, okay, the Relative Strength Index. Okay, because this is what we're going to be using as well to help give us another confluence. Okay, so let's get rid of, oh, I've just got rid of, the, rid of the whole RSI. I want to get rid of just, you know, the yellow candle, yellow yellow line, sorry. Um, so here we are, I just want the purple line. So we've now drawn out our imbalance, okay, as we can see from the top of the red candle. And the green candle as well, it's got a flat bottom, it's not covered by its next you know, wick, okay? And we drag it across. And then essentially, when the imbalance gets tapped back into, we can either set a reminder, we can set a notification, we can set an alert on TradingView, that's one thing that TradingView does really nicely is you can set alerts. And essentially, when it taps back into that, that's when it's peaking our interest, okay? We are now interested, we wanna see what happens within the market, okay? Now, if, for instance, the RSI was you know, halfway up the screen, it wouldn't be either oversold or overbought. Okay, so there's a strong probability that, you know, the market could move either way, okay? Whereas here, as we can see, it's lined up nicely. Okay, we can see that the market is oversold, okay? It's oversold here, it's at the 30 level, okay? Which is brilliant, because of course, when it's at the 30 level, we're gonna be looking for buys, okay? And when it's at the 70 level, we're gonna be looking for sells, okay? So first, we've drawn out an imbalance, it's been tapped back into. And then the second thing is that our RSI is oversold, okay? So really, really good setup, and possibility for getting in on a trade here, okay? And as we can see, that would have really played out very nicely, okay? We can use loads of other examples as well, and we'll do that, you know, in a second to go through where examples have worked and haven't worked. So 
First thing being imbalances. Second thing being RSI. Okay. Now, the third thing is distance. Okay. Now, the distance in terms of the imbalance. Now, if, for instance, let's remove this eye. Okay. We had our imbalance here. Okay. We drew it out and we drew it across to here. Okay. And the market moved up as it did up here, up here, up here, up here. Okay. But then all of a sudden, the market dips instantly back into this imbalance. Is what I've got. Is what I say has it's got not enough space. Okay, it needs breathing space to grow and develop and become more powerful. Okay, so for me, from my back testing, from my personal experience, imbalances become more powerful once they have be, been given room to grow and expand. Okay, and so, you know, if the market moved for here, from here directly down to here, um, you know, whether it was direct or whether it was slow or not it wouldn't be enough time because that distance would have been from the first to the second would have been within a day. Now, for me, you know, a couple of days, at least, you know, it's, it's, it tends to be down to from what I you know, experienced more of an experience based thing. It just needs, it's just a level of judgment, but you know, over here is a perfect level of distance. You know, it's, it's a good amount of time here you know, that the market has had to retrace back into a zone of importance and then to see if it's oversold or overbought. And if we can you know, make a move out of this. So, that's the third thing. And then the fourth thing that I've got and I actually incorporate is price action. OK, so when we're in the imbalance zone, okay, we've got given our notification. We can see that the market is oversold or overbought. OK, the third thing that I'm going to be looking and the fourth thing I'm going to be looking for after space is price action. OK, now things that I want to be seeing. So let's jump onto it. Let's see if you know we would have actually gotten given what we actually want to look for. So it's either 15 minute or five minute time frames okay, that I tend to look at. Um, but let's look at this here. So, um, quite choppy. Let's see what would happen on the five minute. I don't do the one minute, but let's look at the five minute and then let's look at the 30 minute, see what we've gotten given in terms of price action. Okay, and let's see if this is a good example or a difficult example to explain. Okay, no, nice. It's gone 30 minute. Let's see what it's saying here. Good. Yeah, so. I mean, the first thing that we can see, okay, as anyone can see, is a lot of candle wicks, okay? We can see a lot of retracement off of this zone. We can see a lot of bouncing off of this zone, okay? But the, the main thing that I'd be looking at on the 15-minute time frame is I'm mainly looking for pin bars or engulfing candles, okay? Now, for me here, this would be a great sign, this candlestick here, okay? Now, of course, this is hindsight. You know, we probably would have got in a trade after this candle and caught this move, okay? We probably wouldn't have caught the entirety of this move, okay? But this for me, in hindsight, looking back, back testing and trying to explain it for you would be a really good indication, okay, of a bullish move, okay? Why? Well, because we saw retracement, okay, down to this imbalance zone. We got our notification, we're interested. Okay, we know we're oversold, okay, on the, on the lower timeframes also and on the higher timeframes, okay? And then what we can also see is rejection, okay, not once, not twice, but a third time, okay? And when candlesticks are closed like this, okay? And the third candle has closed above, you know, the previous candle whilst having, um, you know, tested it previously, we know that we've got a really good, strong indication that we're gonna have bullish momentum after this. So, you know, in an ideal situation, your entry would have been after this, okay? Because you would have had a very, very strong chance of if you had a trade like this, you know, with your stop loss below these wicks because these have previously been tested and you know targeting zones higher up you would have had a very very strong chance of a bullish move okay so because of course this is you know looking back in hindsight you can't you know fully test everything um but you can kind of see where i'm going okay so let's let's break down try and break down another example okay um let's try and find one that worked well also keep moving through here on the one hour, yeah. Just want to try and find one that's really clean um, and ideally, you know, as as easy to to learn from as possible. There's loads through here. Um, you know, some that I can actually remember taking as well. Let's try and see if we've got any really nice examples. I've got four hour. See if we've got any cleaner ones. Beautiful. Okay, perfect example here as well. So now what I'm looking at is, is this imbalance here. Okay, great imbalance, 
good imbalance, okay? And this would be where our imbalance is placed off. Let's get our rectangle up. Okay, boom, top to bottom, okay, dragged along, okay? And we can see how this would have worked. So we've got our imbalance, okay, flat bottom again. Okay, we've got our third candle has not retraced into this, means that it is valid. Okay, if this candle again had covered, you know, the rest of this green candle, it would be invalid, okay? But we can then see that the market hasn't then instantly come into this imbalance zone, but has waited, given us a few days, given us a bit of time, okay, from the 16th through to the 22nd. So this is a waiting game, of course, okay? But we can then see that the market instantly pushes into this imbalance and then instantly rejects. Okay, and that, that right there is, you know, 80, 90 pips. Okay, if we go from 10, yeah, you know, 100 pips really, um, you're looking at there, okay, as a trade. If we drop down to the lower time frames, I'm sure we can see that in greater depth. Let's move into this here. Okay. But yeah, you can know, you can see this here. Boom, taking in on the four hour imbalance, boom. We've seen an instant rejection and it's flies. Um, let me try and find another one that's really clean um, that we can break down in further depth. Let's start one hour. And yes, this is you know clearly a longer style format video. I'm going to try and keep this un, you know uncut and as raw as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, grab yourself some water and some food if you need to, if you need it. Um, okay, let's break this out now. Let's get into some of this. If you've got any entries, you do. Okay, interesting. Interesting. This is a good one. Now, let's break this down. Okay, now this one really is going to test whether you've learned or not what I was talking about. So, here we do have an imbalance, but it's not going to be as powerful a one because, okay, we what we've seen is this. So, we've seen, let me go back onto the arrow. Okay, we've seen. Move, bearish, bearish, bearish. We've seen our flat bottom created, okay? And then our third candle has covered a lot of the imbalance, but not all of it. So this part is still valid, okay? So if we're drawing it out, get rid of the arrow so you can actually see the candlestick. Drawing it out, going from there, from the top, candlestick across, boom. That would be where we're placing a trade. Okay, now if we're looking at that again, okay, we can also see that this had time. Okay, we can also see that the market is oversold. Okay, so another strong indication that we're going to see a bullish move sooner rather than later. Okay, and as a result, we see a great profitable move. Okay, now let's see if I can try and find a sell setup. You know, this wasn't tapped into. Let me go on to light mode, in fact. Because I think we might be able to see some different setups now that we've got different mode on. Yeah, here we go. Let's do this. It's got one hour time frame. Boom. It wasn't quite smooth, but we can again see imbalance tapped into, oversold, bullish move. Okay. And, you know, this is, of course, your profit where you're collecting your profit. Okay. Let's see another one. This is choppy, but this is another imbalance. Imbalance here. Dragged all the way across here, tapped into. First time round, we can see that it's oversold. Boom, catch your profit. There's your profit. That's your move. Okay, that's your, you know, 30, you know, three to 70 pips, however much, you know, you're risking on this. Um, that's your trade. Okay, imbalance, oversold, caught the profit. Okay, vice versa. Let's look at sell. Now, this is a huge imbalance. It doesn't really add much. You know, to it, you know, um, but you know, we do get some, we do get some retracement. That is a little bit of a play, but not a very good example. Um, this is a great example. Boom, here we go. Here's our imbalance. Okay. Okay, why? Let's just use, you know, let's go through a sell example. Okay, this third candle has not filled any of this previous red candle. Okay, and we've got a flat top. Okay, we can see what an imbalance now looks like. Okay, it's got, a, you know, a relatively decent size. In this, for instance, is a good example as well. We'll go through that in a second. But this candle here is quite small, so it's going to be less powerful. So I've sometimes seen you know, price just steam straight through it. But let's drag that across, and boom. You know, we wait, we wait. It's given us a couple of days. Um, what is it, 28th through to the 30th? Given us a couple of days. 
you know, price hasn't gone back into this zone. So the first time that it goes back into this zone, we get an alert, we see what we're thinking, okay? And then what we see is we see that the market is overbought, okay, it's at the 70 level, okay? And as a result, you know, we're looking to take a short, okay? You know, we would place our stops above the previous high and we would target, as I've mentioned, we'll talk about that in a second, but, you know, you target basically, you know, the next imbalance, okay? Or you can target a one-to-one, -one, whatever you want to target. But essentially that's the trade and it's a, you know, pretty much a zero drawdown trade, great trade, okay? And we can see that that was taken off of the imbalance, off of the RSI. If we go down on lower timeframes, we would also see some price action there as well. But let's use this as an example. This is a really, really precise example. This really shows the power of imbalances. As I've said, this is a weaker one, but it does show the power of imbalances. Boom. There we go, everyone. There we go, ladies and gents. You know, imbalance drawn out, we're waiting from the 31st of March to the 5th of April, a fair few days waiting, okay? We draw it out, we've got it drawn, and then boom, the next time the market enters this zone, we see a sell-off, okay? We're nearly over overbought. You know, I would have taken that trade, okay? I say that now, easy to say now, but I definitely would have taken that trade because it's such a strong bullish move, okay? There's a very, very strong chance. If the market slowly creeps its way up to your imbalance zone, you know, it does work, of course it does, but we tend to see more instantaneous reactions and sniper entries off of, you know, times when there's faster moves like this, faster moves like this into your zone, taps and, you know, retraces instantly. So, boom. Okay, now let's use this in another example. Wow, this is a great one as well. We've got three great examples all together. Wow, awesome. Okay, here we go. So, imbalance that I've drawn out. Okay, why? Again, flat top. And now we're now on dark mode, you can't even see my arrows, but flat top, okay? Draw it across. It's not been tapped into. This is not tapped into it yet. It's not filled it, okay? But this has tapped into it. And boom, as soon as it does, we check to see if it's overbought, which it is, okay? And boom, we see a retracement. Okay, we see a sell-off. Massive trade again, okay? You're taking another short. This would be your entry, somewhere in the middle. Okay, you'd be looking to sell off. You'd be placing your stops above the high, of the previous candle, okay, boom, huge, okay? So, goodness me, I could go through this all day. As I said, I could do this for five hours, okay, because this is what I trade every single day. You know, this is the way that I trade. This is the way that I've learned, you know, and I learned this through trial and error, okay? I learned, you know, what I now know to be called imbalances, okay, through working it out, okay, through understanding why did the market spike and retra retrace? And I learned that these flat tops and flat bottoms, as I called them back in the day, you know, are now called imbalances. But for me, it was the moment where the market, you know, turned and retraced, okay? And it's, it's darn obvious now, you know, it really is. Um, you know, I wanna see a longer time frame one because, you know, sometimes what I have, so if I got up, back up the drawings that I previously had before I deleted them before doing this video, um, you know, I've drawn out, you know, different imbalances from months back, okay? And the longer that they accumulate, the longer that they build up on the higher time frames, the more powerful they become, okay? And you know, what I've seen for intraday trading is one hour time frame works perfectly. But if you are on the four hour time frame, okay, or on the daily time frame, okay, you've got imbalances from a month back, they are very, very powerful zones. Um, so yeah, look out for that. So boom. I mean, let's use this as an example. Okay, this didn't really work. This was more of a failing example. Okay, now a few different things. I mean, this is quite a big zone. But for me, the main thing will be space. Okay, it's it just doesn't look like it's got given enough space, if you see what I mean. You know, it, it needs space for the market to grow, retrace, and then boom, taps into it and, and, you, and you give it a go to, um, to trade it. But, you know, that would have been a losing trade if you took it. Um, you know, it does happen. This is not 100% successful strategy. It's just something that I found to be really, really, really profitable, um, you know, on gold in particular. So, again, this would have worked, but I wouldn't have said it's got really enough space. You know, visually, you know, we could have, you know, drawn this out. And it would work. You know, yes, theoretically, we are sold. Yes, this is an imbalance zone, but it's just not really enough time. I probably wouldn't have wanted to have taken that trade. Um, and also, at the same time, this market, you know, this works when the market is, is balancing. It works really nicely when it's ranging. If it's just trending, this is, you know, not really the best strategy to be, take, to be taking. Um, but as we've seen in the last, um, you know, handful of months, you know, the market has just been bouncing and off of these zones, especially. So, see if we've got any more recent examples. Um, you know, this right here is not, it's an invalid imbalance, would work. You know, if that rule wasn't in place, that would work. Of course it would. Look at it. Boom. But this is an invalid imbalance. Why? Because you should be able to answer this by now. 
this oh, you can't even see it <laughs> let me move that to, to black okay um this you know candlestick here has wicked into the previous candlestick making it invalid okay so it doesn't it doesn't count anymore okay um and yeah as i said here you know again it just doesn't look like enough space you know it's something that i've sort of found after you know more experience i mean this doesn't look like enough space again it would work this wouldn't work this would work because of course this is your imbalance okay that's your trade that's your entry and boom it skyrocketed but it doesn't look right so for me it has to have you know, the market has to have played out for a little bit longer like you know this is the perfect example really this really is a great example you know something where the market's moved the trades back in oversold boom skyrocks skyrockets um now let me talk about briefly before this video gets too long um now i'm aware this is long already um where your targets would be again how you could possibly use this with targets now of course this is not my entire strategy okay i'm not going to be leaking my entire strategy on this video okay, i want to make that clear this is not my entire strategy um but this is a few things that i take into account when taking a trade on gold you know into day trading gold and you know it's worked brilliantly for me over the last three years um you know i've been profitable and use utilizing this for the last year so i hope hopefully you know from this video you can learn a lot from it and you can utilize this for yourself um but yeah as for targets, these would be your targets, okay? If we're using this as a trade entry, okay, your targets would be here, okay? What you're targeting, okay, is other imbalance zones. Up there, I mean, that's not really allowing you much space, is it? But this is theoretically another imbalance, okay? Just to the top of that wick, so it's quite a thin one. That would be another target, okay? So let's get rid of this one, because this one's just big. Um, these would be your targets, okay? Why? Because the market moves, if you look at the market long enough, like I have on gold, you will see that it moves between imbalances, okay? It moves between these zones. So it goes from one zone, taps back into another zone, taps into the next one, taps into the next one, and then plays off it again, okay? So these can be really good target zones as well that you can, you know, incorporate into your know, trading. Now have a look at them as well, because, you know, it's, it's quite interesting to see how the market moves between them. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I'm trying to think how long this video has been. It's probably been... 40 50 minutes now so i don't want to you know keep it too long um so just to reiterate one last time um imbalances okay you're looking for zones and areas okay, i need to make that a true imbalance where the market creates a flat bottom or a flat top okay and what needs to happen and have happened is that the next candle has not wicked down and covered the candlestick okay because, for instance, in this situation, this would be an imbalance if this wick was not there. But because this wick is there and it's covered this imbalance, it's invalid. OK, I mean, only this small sliver down here at the bottom is valid. OK, but because it's so small, I wouldn't really class it as one. OK, but you're looking for zones like this. OK, where your wicks have not covered your zones. And you can then drag that across and that can be a trade opportunity a trade entry okay and after that what you're then looking for let's go back to the key example okay is where the rsi is oversold or overbought okay because that is going to give you a strong indication of the momentum of the market if the market is looking as though you know it's going to retrace it's going to return and it's going to change okay then what you need is space you, know, you want space between your zones okay you want a good proportion of space for the you know for the imbalance to breathe to grow to come more powerful you know i don't want to personify the imbalance but you know essentially that's what it is um and after that then what you need to be looking at is on the lower time frames price action i'll give you a few tips which are like pin bars and golfing candles but essentially you know price action stuff like that is stuff that i've just learned from experience you know how the how the candlesticks form you know how they're looking are they looking like they're going to continue crushing through this imbalance what does it look like the market is going to bounce off this imbalance towards higher targets and higher zones okay so with that all together you know, that is a quick, quick taster, you know, really of what I've, you know, learned over the last, you know, handful of years in terms of trading gold and things that I think that you should be able to take from this, um, you know, really help you in terms of profitability on gold. So, you know, if you have found this video useful, as always, feel free to, you know, like down below, subscribe, check out the other videos. Um, the other videos so far are more commonly asked questions, and this is more of a long form, you know, style format video. Um, but yeah, if you like these style videos, if you actually think they're going to be useful for you, um, then please share them along to your friends and please, you know, like and let me know, um, you know, because then I'll create some more. OK, and I'll do it on other pairs as well. Um, you know, and I'll possibly break down gold in even further depth, um, you know, for those for those that want it. So, yeah, ultimately, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, 
check out all the links down below as well um, to the group chats, you know, Telegram, Discord, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you can join up and you can join the community. As I've said, I've got, you know, retail traders in there that are beginners, complete beginners, complete noobs that have never traded before, all the way through to ex Wall Street traders that are doing really, really well in huge numbers every single month. Um, and we, everything can, you know, everyone can learn from something from someone. So um, everyone's got, you know, their part to play um, in terms of joining communities and talking. So yeah, look forward to seeing you inside. And otherwise, I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. Um, I wish you all have an amazing rest of your day. Okay, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.